Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Miss Recap. Today I will show you an episode from the 2020 series Monster Land, titled New York, New Jersey. Back in February, strange blue comets fell on New York, New Jersey. No one knew exactly what they were or why they had come in the middle of winter, but the event became known as the Fall. These comets turns out to be strange creatures that some people begin to call angels. Although they were wingless and bony and their eyes were hollow, they looked more monstrous than anything holy. So it made people wonder if they came to save the world or to destroy it. Now, in the present, Bran is at the supermarket and on top of his groceries, he decides to also buy a doll. At the checkout, the cashier accidentally drops a bunch of coins. triggering some bad memories that cause Brain to flee with his things without waiting for the change. When he arrives home, Brain wraps up the doll using a marker from a drawer full of them. He writes on it his daughter's name, Tabitha, before adding the gift to an enormous pile near a dying tree. Then he spends the afternoon watching TV and drinking beer, and he is still there when his wife Amy comes home from work. Amy urges Brain to change and get ready. so they can leave for their support group but brain refuses to go because the parents in that group are not the same as them those couples kids are dead while tabitha's just lost which means they could still find her this is why brain still keeps up the christmas decorations and everything in tabitha's room amy understands it is hard for him but she wishes he communicated more because she got her shifted covered just for this which is not an easy task to achieve at a police station remembering their psychologist said support groups could help them move on and he decides to go on her own anyway the following day brain visits a hypnotherapist who hypnotizes him to help him revisit the memory of the afternoon tabitha went missing 16 months ago brain had picked up tabitha from ballet and took her to get ice cream there was a dog outside the store and Tabitha kept insisting she wanted to go out and pet it so Brain let her go outside as long as he could still see her from the store's glass facade however when the cashier accidentally dropped his change Brain looked away for a second to pick it up and that was enough for Tabitha to disappear Brain ran outside and thanks to the therapist's guidance Brain manages to remember a minivan and the number of its license plate afterward Brain visits Clayton, a co-worker of Amy's, to ask him to run the license plate for clues. Clayton is skeptical, but when Brain expresses worry over Tabitha's case possibly going cold, Clayton promises to do as much as he can. Meanwhile, Amy continues to go to the support group led by Tommy. One evening, she shares the story of Tabitha's dream to become a ballerina. She began taking classes and she wanted brown ballet shoes the girls from Alvin Ailey would wear. Their local store only carried pink though, so Brain bought a bunch of markers to paint the shoes as many times as needed. The markers are still in the house, and they are one of those details that act as a constant reminder of their missing daughter. One of the other parents wonder if this means Amy wishes Tabitha was actually dead, but she denies it and ends her story there. When she leaves the meeting, Amy gets a call from Clayton telling her that the license plate is a dead end. Amy did not even know about this and gets frustrated to learn Bren has been hiding things from her. She gets in her car, ready to leave, but suddenly she sees in the mirror the reflection of a girl running behind the car, believing her to be Tabitha. Amy follows her into an abandoned building where she finds a sleeping tram next to an old shopping cart. When she looks inside it, she shocked to find the head of a dead angel. Later that night, Brain opens the drawer and finds all the markers gone. Amy explains she is thrown them all away because tonight she is finally accepted that Tabitha's dead. Brain freaks out, refusing to give up on his daughter and calling out Amy for doing so. However, Amy is tired of him putting his pressure on her when she is just trying to survive, which is difficult to do when she sees Tabitha everywhere. Now wanting to hear such hopeless words from his wife anymore, Bren goes to Tabitha's room to tidy it up again. Then his phone rings with a call from a private detective Bren has hired. 
who tells him the name and address of the minivan's owner. The next day, Amy has to rush to the police station. After she learns her husband has been arrested, he is being charged with trespassing because Brain had gone to the house of the minivan owner to snoop around, causing the neighbors to get scared and call the police. The fact the license plate was a dead end was not a lie. The owner had not been in town when Tabitha disappeared, but it seems Brain is desperate to find someone to blame. Once Brain is released, Amy tells him Tommy is waiting for them outside because it was he who gave her a ride and now he will take them home. As soon as they return to their house, Amy scolds Brain for snooping around a stranger's house, asking him to let the cops do their jobs. However, Brain thinks the police don't care about a missing black kid and accuses Amy of doing nothing to help. Hurt, Amy begins pointing out how Brain keeps drinking himself to sleep and won't go back to work. So, she is the only one providing for the family while he spends a fortune on unopened Christmas gifts. Then Amy decides to finally confess she is having an affair with Tommy. Amy asks Brain to fight for her and he will lose her with this attitude. But Brain says he cannot because if he does, that means Tabitha is dead. Amy goes to bed alone without a word and Brain decides to go to a bar. The only open place he ends up finding is a diner with waitress Tony in charge. Since Brain wants something strong to drink, Tony searches her manager's secret stash and brings out a bottle of tequila. Noticing Brain is feeling down, Tony offers him to get busy with her, but Brain turns her down as he shows her his wedding ring. Tony wonders why a married guy is going short alone in a bar at 2 a.m. And in return, Brain wonders how someone young like Tony becomes so jaded. Tony explains she is not jaded. She is wise, thanks to an epiphany she had last week. She had been working her shift at the diner, and a baby that would not stop crying was driving her crazy. Thus, she went outside to have a smoke. That was when she noticed a guy selling illegal substances across the street. So she decided to ask for something to help her pass the day. His goods turned out to be pure angel blood. It seemed people had been capturing the angels and sealing out their parts. Tony bought some and gave them a try. Shocked by how heightened all her senses became, she felt like she could see the origins of everything that surrounded her, but the effect was too strong to handle, and Tony ended up going to the bathroom to throw up. When she looked at herself in the mirror, Afterward, her mouth was gone and her eyes were black. Even now, Tony thinks the blood did its job and showed her the truth. She is a monster. Brain says he is a monster too. So Tony requests to exchange stories. She begins by telling Brain that she goes to support groups for parents that lost their kids. Except that she did not lose hers. She actually abandoned her daughter in a burger place. Still, when she tells the stories to the groups, she pretends the child is dead because it makes her feel better. Tony does not know where her kid is and she can't go back to get her because she is being declared unfit. But even if she could, she does not want to. Brain can't understand how a parent could give up their child like that. Then tells Tony the story of Tabitha's disappearance. He feels guilty because he had promised he had always watch over her. After drinking some more tequila, Tony turns on the jukebox and drags Brain to the dance floor. The two of them have fun together and even come closer for a kiss. But the moment is interrupted when the music suddenly stops. Tony rushes to the register to grab more coins for the jukebox. But when she accidentally drops them to the floor, it triggers Brain's trauma and he leaves without even saying goodbye. On his way home, Brain thinks he sees Tabitha in the middle of the road and follows her into an alley, where he finds a trial of brown markers that takes him to a trash container. When he opens it, Brain is shocked to find a wounded angel laying on top of the trash. Deciding to help, Brain carries the angel in his arms all the way to his house, where together with Amy, he puts the angel on Tabitha's bed. The pair comforts the angel and takes care of the wound. While discussing their options, Brain mentions the police but Amy refuses because they would just take the angel away. The ugly people are disturbing for sealing out angel parts. And while Brain wonders if heaven is a dark place, 
that God kicked the angels out of. Amy thinks the angel is here for them. The three of them fall asleep in Tabitha's room. And in the morning, the angel is feeling so much better and it decides to share its blood with them. It gathers some blood from its wound and puts just a drop on Prince and Amy's tongue, which is still enough to make them trip. It seems the angel blood accelerates the process of grief and the couple begins going through the different stages in minutes. Brain admits he could not know who he is without his daughter and Amy finally gets tired of the smelly tree. So she pushes it down and begins throwing the gifts around. Then Brain has breakdown down on the floor only for seconds later to ask Amy if Tommy had been a good affair when Amy says yes. Brain leaves the house and goes all the way to the support group to punch Tommy. When he returns, Amy is smiling because he is finally fighting for her and she helps him bandage his hand. The couple begins reminiscing about the night at the movies. A bright light surrounds the couple and once they have finished, Brain and Amy open their eyes to find themselves inside a theater. On the stage, Tabitha finally performs her dance for them as a final goodbye. The episode ends here. Thanks for watching. If you like it, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel.